Welcome to Fraser Mac Gaming, I'm Fraser Mac. This is the latest in my Fraser Mac Gaming news series, where I go through the latest game coming to your Switch and cover everything to do with everyone's favourite hybrid system. September is not far away now, I'm recording this fairly early, but there's already a huge host of games coming to the Switch in September. So I'm going to cover them in two videos. This video is going to be all about the indie releases and there's going to be one kind of retro release, which I kind of think is indie. So which games am I really excited for? Which games are releasing in the month of September? And what should you pick up? Find out after this. Torchlight 2 was announced as part of the Indie World presentation we had and it's releasing September 3rd on Switch. Torchlight 2 is obviously a classic action RPG game. It was on Steam, I think it was way back in 2012. So it's something people will be desperate to play on Switch. It's from Runic Games, Perfect World Entertainment, and I believe Panic Button has been involved in the port, just like with Hob. It's got some classic top-down RPG action. It's very much like Diablo. It's going to be obviously Darksiders Genesis is kind of taken on this style of play. Some of you might have played Redeemer Enhanced Edition as well. So fans of those games will absolutely love this. I think it looks fantastic. There's great news that you can play up to four-player online co-op. You can experiment with different heroes and how they actually collaborate and how they synergize their powers. You can create and customize your character. There are four different classes. I've not played Torchlight 2, so I don't know how it plays exactly, but see, I'm looking forward to the port. Torchlight 2, it doesn't currently have a price for the UK eShop, but it's going to be around $20 on the US eShop if you pre-purchase. So I think it'll be around £17, and it's something I'm looking forward to picking up September 3rd. Up next and released on September 5th from Way Forward and Arc Systems, it's River City Girls. Apparently it's part of the Kunio Kun series. I'm not familiar with it, so apologies if I butchered the name. I really don't know that much about it, but obviously I like Way Forward. I like the Shantae series. And River City Girls, it looks like a real classic kind of arcade co-op beat-em-up game. So they've taken a little bit of a spin and you play as two girls who actually have to save their boyfriends because they've been kidnapped. So it's very cheesy, it's very over the top. I think it's really just... I don't know if it's been serious or it's just taking the mick out of the classic kind of guys always saving girls, but they have some very over the top girly lines and it's coming out September 5th, but it's also getting a physical release from Limited Run Games. I believe that's at the end of August and it'll be around $30, so I'll put a link down below, but River City Girls, it looks fun. I think the action look could be interesting. It features some lovely pixel art graphics. There's a great soundtrack. There's six large city regions to fight your way through and there's shops and side quests as well. Lots of weapons and items along the way. You can actually power up your heroines as well. And there's some guest appearances from classic River City characters. So there's some interesting stuff. I like the look of it. It looks quite funny. So I think I'll be picking that up when it releases September 5th. Coming straight after River City Girls is Creature in the Well. It was another game that was shown off in the Indie World presentation. It's from Project Flight School and essentially it is pinball with swords is what they say. It does look quite interesting. I'm a little bit concerned about the pinball mechanics and how that will work and how much I'll enjoy that. Yoko's Island Express used something similar and it worked really well on a platformer in Metroidvania. In this story, you've actually got to restore this weather machine because a sandstorm is going to take over your civilization. You've got to fight a creature that has shut down this station for a number of years, but it looks cool. It's just the gameplay mechanics, but obviously it's a small game, Creature in the Well. It arrives September 6th. It's only £12, or just around £12 with a pre-order discount. Uh, obviously in the US it's got a discount as well, so it's around $13.50. Up next is a game I am very excited for. It's Blasphemous. It's coming to Switch September 10th. Another one from the Indie World presentation. It's a very dark, mature, gory, hack and slash action platformer. It's got kind of action RPG elements. I thought it might be a roguelike, but I think I was wrong when I talked about that before. Essentially though, it's got some classic 16-bit pixel art. You're going to explore these deep, deep, deep dungeons, this kind of underground lair. The foul curses are fallen upon the land of Custodia. So all the inhabitants, everyone there, they've obviously 
fallen under this curse and you've got to basically fight your way through and discover the story. It's got quite a dark, evocative story, apparently. It's really interesting. I think, you know, the action combat looks good. It looks really fast-paced. It looks like you've got some really cool weapons to find. Obviously, it's like Mortal Kombat. They're not hiding anything. This is definitely a mature game. I can't believe they showed off so much blood in this, but Hotline Miami was actually censored quite a lot in terms of what they showed in the Indie World presentation, but it looks great, you know, just look at the combat, it looks like it'll be a really fun time, quite a challenging game, you know, it says it's got executions, so you can almost have finishing moves of sorts, I think. Obviously the pixel art looks tremendous, there's babies in there, I have no idea what that's doing, it's really weird and freaky, but, you know, it does look like a great game, there's some epic boss battles, Blasphemous, come September 10th, to the Switch, I don't know what the UK eShop price is going to be, but on the US eShop, it's going to be $25, so it'll probably be around £20 in the UK. On September 19th, we've got one of the games that was shown off in the Kind of Funny Games E3 Showcase, so I picked it up then. It is called Police Stories. It's from Mighty Morgan and Hype Train Digital. So in Police Stories, it's like Hotline Miami in terms of top-down action, but you have to be a lot smarter with your decisions and you have to actually use tactics and you have to decide whether to apprehend a convict or whether or not you need to shoot on sight. You have to make decisions just like a normal police officer, very much in the moment. You can either play single player or in co-op and there are two cops, there are John Rhymes and Rick Jones. It's going to be an interesting game. There's missions, there's an actual crime story, sort of crime thriller story that unfolds throughout the game. You can issue commands to your fellow cop if you're playing single player. There's randomly placed criminals, hostages and evidence. So you're going to have to look around and use your wits as well. It looks really interesting. It looks a bit different as well because it's not just a run and gun. So police stories, it's coming to Switch September 19th. In the UK, it's going to be £14 and in the US, it's $15. So you're actually getting a better deal there. And it looks like it'll be something interesting. It's a little bit different because you have to use a little bit of thought rather than just running and gunning. Something different now, I don't usually play tactics based games but Shiro Games are bringing Northgard to Switch. It's basically Vikings and you have to build a civilization and assign workers and you have to help your village grow. So it's a little bit more intense than something like Bad North but it does have a similar sort of Scandinavian look and feel. Obviously you are playing as Vikings, you're going to have to manage your resources and you're going to have to expand and discover new territory. There's different victory conditions, so you can actually conquest, you can fame, you can lower, you can trade. So it sounds like you can actually have partnerships and actually, you know, work together with people. You know, you can play against your friends or against an AI, so that would be an interesting one. Northgard is on the pricey side for an eShop game, so it's over £30 usually on the UK eShop, but there's a 20% discount if you pre-order. And in the US, it's going to be $28, but usually $35. You can actually buy it physically, it's coming to retail, you can get a UK physical for around £25, so for me that's a much better deal. Another physical game that will be releasing on Switch in September is Darksiders 2 Definitive Edition. So I know I'm stretching it a little bit saying it's an indie, it's kind of, it's not a triple A, it's probably not an indie, THQ are obviously a lot bigger than that, but obviously they've had a small studio working on it. It's coming to Switch, it's been remastered, so obviously it's from older generations, but Darksiders Warmastered went down very, very well. I think Darksiders 2 is another one that will go down well. It's been officially confirmed to come in September 26th, and obviously you get a chance to play as Death. There's a huge universe, you have to fight back against, it looks like the devil. I've not played the Darksiders games, even though I own them on PS3. There is an epic universe, like I discussed, so you get to travel through these huge worlds. It's an action combat game, so, you know, there's a lot Lot of choice and customization available as well lots of weapons and armor sets and you've got skill trees so there's huge amounts of replayability the interest and in sort of platforming elements as well so all the dlc is included coming to switch from previous games so they've upgraded the graphics given it a little touch up the physical release will retail for around 27 pounds in the uk and around 30 dollars in the us and i think it's going to be similar on the e-shops in the uk and us as well when it releases so darksiders definitive edition it releases september 26th i know it's not quite an indie but it's not triple a either is it it's something we all look forward to though because i think it's a good action rpg in that kind of devil may cry sort of style so i'm looking forward to it coming to switch Another game releasing September 26th and it's Gunvolt Chronicles Luminous IX. So I hope I've got that right, but it's from Inti Creates. It's fallen on from the Azure Striker Gunvolt pack. 
that we got on Switch a while ago. So it's set in the same universe. It's it's not really talked about whether or not it's a direct sequel or prequel or what it is, but it's in that same sort of universe. It's obviously known for real high speed, some quality 2D side scrolling action. So all you kind of Mega Man fans or your Mega Man X fans, this is the kind of game for you. It's obviously a very kind of anime style, but you know, it's got some really, really good reviews, or the previous games had some really good reviews. It was talked about obviously earlier this year, so I've been looking forward to it for a while. You can actually pre order a physical from Play Asia. I don't know if it's actually going to get a retail release in the West, I've not seen anything of it yet, but that's going to be around £35 and then you're going to have to ship it. It's not going to be a cheap eShop game, I'm not sure if it's going to come to the West in terms of the eShop or not. But it's trying to take that 2D action from the Azure Striker games and just bring it forward and polish it up. So I believe there's multiple playable characters and there's different sort of gameplay mechanics. There's a prevasion action which can sort of nullify damage. There's Anthem which returns players from the death in a new powered up state. And you know there's lots of other things. You can enjoy scoring kudos by racking up combos if you avoid damage of course and there's lots of interest and in other upgrades you can take advantage of and hardware you can pick up the sound and graphics obviously it's got that kind of classic colorful look you know it's very interesting very flashy you know i like the look of it it's obviously a slightly anime type style but you know your scores from your playthrough are actually displayed on the screen so it's quite cool they said you can actually share on social media easily it's a kind of retro styled game but just a more modern up scaled version of kind of like SNES style graphics so I think it looks really good it looks fun I don't really know what the story is but there are multiple characters you can play as so I think you'll be able to pick your favorite and play through so Gunvolt Chronicles Luminous IX it comes out September 26th like I said the physical and play is just going to be around £35 and that will ship around the world it does have multiple languages so if you're a collector or you're just looking to get this and get better value for your money that would be something you could look at and we'll see if there's more details on eShop releases closer to the time the end of September is absolutely jam-packed on Switch and that's just talking about indie games never mind the actual AAA big games that are getting physical and retail releases. So yes, we've got the fantastic news that Ori and the Blind Forest is coming to Switch September 27th. It was part of the Indie World presentation. It was the big finish, the one more thing. It's been something we've all been looking forward to since the Xbox and Nintendo loving started. This game has been on my hit list. I can't wait to get my hands on it. It's amazing that it's coming soon, but I was hoping before the you know the kind of presentation that it might be one that you just drop there and then. You know, I was really, really sort of fingers crossed hoping it would be because it's just gorgeous. Like look at it. In terms of sort of platforming game, you can't hope for a game to look better. I really hope that it runs well on Switch. My slight worry is that in handheld some of these platform elements it might actually you know your character might actually or you might look quite small you know like lightfall was one of those games i enjoyed it's not on this level this you know ori in the blind forest is a standout game you know an absolute award-winning game it's got brilliant story brilliant gameplay brilliant graphics it's got everything moon studios and obviously xbox supported them you know they did an amazing job with this I just I hope it runs buttery smooth on Switch. You know, I'm going to get it no matter what and try it out because I've just been looking forward to it for so long. And I hope Will of the Wisps follows up soon. But it comes September 27th. We don't know anything about price yet. The pre-order page isn't up yet as of the time of recording. But we'll hopefully get more details soon. And I'm definitely going to get it day one. So those are my picks for the month of September on Switch from an indie perspective. There's some fantastic games there. September is just a huge month for games all around. It's very expensive. My wallet's hurting. I hope there's no more like sudden drops. You know, there's potential for a, an actual Nindies Direct. They tend to come around the end of August. So if there are other drops, I'm not going to include them in this video. It's been recorded in advance because I'm going on holiday. But you know, there's a lot of games I'm really looking forward to. Games like Blasphemous, Torchlight 2, you know, they've got all the kind of elements I really look forward to, so I can't wait for those. I think, obviously, the big one for me, Ori and the Blind Forest. It's the big one for almost everyone, I think, if you're a fan of indies or Metroidvanias, platforming games. It just looks gorgeous. It's it's a huge deal that's come to Switch, and I think, obviously, Will the Wisps will most likely follow at some point, but I'm sure they'll space it out a little bit. But I'm really going to enjoy Ori and the Blind Forest. I hope it runs well. I can't wait for it. I'm sure at some point it'll get a physical release as well. You know, Cuphead is most likely to get a physical release on the Switch probably before Ori, but, you know, I'm going to pick all those up when they come. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave some comments down below. Let me know what you're looking forward to, which games you're going to be getting on your Switch. Is there any in the video you've liked? 
this is all we've got time for but i'm going to obviously be away on holiday i might not be able to interact too much but this is all the time we've got for this video i hope you enjoyed it please hit that subscribe button turn on notifications and i will see you on the next one